obviously with your background in the, in the camp circuit, you know, nine years with student sports, having an opportunity to work with Nike, Elite 11, and, and kind of seeing it from kids from California to Florida, from New York to Texas, kind of all across the entire country. Tell me one thing that is, or just your biggest thing of, what does a kid need to do to get into the camp? A lot of times they rely on coaches and other things. They, they don't get the result they want. They can't even get into the camp. So what's the, you were kind of like the gatekeeper for years. That's kind of how we met, you know, in the, in the Nike, uh, the Spark program and, and the testing combines across the country. You know, you were the gatekeeper of some of those athletes just to be able to get in, evaluating them and, and doing that. What, what's like the one tip you would give a kid to say, hey, here's what you need to do to, you know, help yourself out to give yourself a better opportunity to get into the camp? Know what, exactly what they're going for. Um, a lot of kids just kind of get word of mouth from their, their teammates, um, a coach, a trainer, something like that, says submit your stuff here. But, you know, they, I would just get an email with a link to their highlight. And that's it. That's it. And right then and there, I'm, I'm not going to pursue that or put my time and effort into it if the kid's not going to have the, uh, the know-how to introduce himself through email, tell them exactly what the purpose of the email is, Etc. It goes to a lot of other things, whether it be at a camp, a combine, how you introduce yourself, how you present yourself, and make that first impression. So a lot of times it's kind of annoying in a way. You just get these random emails, and you can tell it's kind of like, oh, their buddy did it, so I'm going to cut and paste my link or this and that, yeah. saying I want to do this, and there's really no reason, rhyme or reason of why they're doing it. And I don't think they know they're, why they're doing it. It's just but it, it makes it more work for you, right? You mean you have to like then check that link out, see if it's a good film. If there's nothing there, then there's a huge problem, you know, because it's like making it just a, a more complicated process, more hurdles that you have to jump through as somebody who's trying to evaluate that kid as a player, but yet you just don't have that information. So the biggest thing is like make sure you provide the accurate information. Now, do you want the coach to reach out? Do you want the parent to reach out? Do you want the friend of a friend to reach out? You said you get emails from, from people that they know you, but they or they were there last year, not from the kid directly. What's the best way for the kid? Uh, just the best way is just to present it in a reasonable way. Uh, before it was all coaches' recommendations, but now we know what the internet and the access the kids have to email and to doing uh, finding links or emails online that they can submit their stuff to. It's not the best way because you're recommending yourself, but your bottom line is your film speaks for itself. Yes, yeah, so you, you, you put yourself out there. Put then. yourself out there, but um, definitely if you have a good relationship with your coach and he's really willing to put his name and say he's a caliber player to get to at least elite level events that I used to be a part of. Um, that goes a lot farther than just uh, Johnny Football sending uh, a link and saying, here's my background, this and that. So um, Now, if you are Johnny Football, you could probably go ahead and send your link because yeah. it's going to get looked at. But for those that are, you definitely mm -hmm. got to do a little bit more uh, due diligence on your end and, and kind of organize it.